Yeah, we so we we pasture our animals at Polyface. Uh, we we call these you know the salad bar. All right, it's the, the green material, and it, and um, so we have these these synergistic relationships. You know, nature is not monospeciated. Nature is very multi-speciated. When you look at nature, uh, you, you look at an acre, and what you see are uh, you know in in a healthy ecosystem, you see lots of different kinds of of things, and so. Um, so on our farm, uh, we have an intricate relationship between animals that is actually synergistic. So, for example, the cows are moving every day. Imagine the cows are moving from paddock to paddock to paddock uh, every day. And then three days behind them comes a portable hen house. We call it the Eggmobile. And it follows the cows. Now, the first one I made was, was one with uh, 50 chickens in it on bicycle wheels. And I just pushed it around the pasture by hand on bicycle wheels. And, uh, and of course, you know, we have, we have 100 acres of open pasture, and so it got a little hard to push it around 100 acres. And so I then retrofitted it on, on wheels that I could tow with, a, with a, you know, a truck or a tractor or something and put more chickens in it and move it around behind the cows. Those chickens then, three days behind the cows, that is right when the fly larva, maggots in the cow pies, have reached their succulents. It's a four-day cycle, so... Uh, you want to get there before the fourth day. If, if you get there the first day, they aren't big enough. If you get there the fifth day, they've already hatched. So the third, third to the fourth day are when you want to uh, catch these. And so the birds follow the cows, uh, the chickens, just like the, uh, follow the cows, just like the, uh, the egret on the rhinos knows. Birds follow herbivores. It's one of the most symbiotic uh, relationships in nature is, is the birds following herbivores. And the birds... Act as, act as sanitizers uh, behind the herbivores and actually uh, scratch through the dung, eat out the fly larva. That's what pays their salary. And, of course, the cows have now exposed all of this insect life uh, in the pasture, you know, grasshoppers and crickets and all this uh, stuff. And so the chickens uh, take that. We can actually grow more pounds of protein in insects per pasture than we can meat and milk. And so this allows us to harvest another level of production off of that pasture that simply, you know, stimulates stimulates everything that's there to be, you know, to breed better, to be healthier, to be more aggressive about about uh, uh, production, and doesn't detract at all from the uh, you know from the, the whole of pie. Um, we run we run broilers on pasture in, in small um, uh, shelters, floorless shelters. We move them every day across the pasture. Of course, the chickens like short grass. So when the, when the grass gets too long and the chickens start laying it over and, and, and you know, pooping on it and then it gets greasy and yucky and the chickens don't like to eat the long blades as well, then we bring the cows in ahead of them to shorten the grass so that the chickens are on nice fresh sprouts, it stimulates their, their ingestion of fresh green material and, and makes the, the chickens healthier. And of course the chickens are leaving behind a nice layer of manure which actually uh, stimulates the the grass to grow so that it's more nutritious and more voluminous for the cows. So both things uh, help, and many in the industrial uh, community, um, conventional community, do uh, accuse us of being anti-science. But you know we're we're very scientific. In fact, uh, in fact, one of the things that I get all excited about when people come to the farm. Uh, is if I hear them saying, oh, that was, that was just like Grandpa's farm. I stop them. I don't let them get by with that. I say, no, this isn't Grandpa's farm. Grandpa would have given his eye teeth for the stuff that we have. And so the technology and the science that we like are, are not only the science of actually studying how nature works, how patterns work. I mean, take a, take a blade of grass, for example. Um, the fact that, that sunbeams, something that, you know, the stuff of poets and, and fantasy and dreamland of sunbeams, as esoteric as that is, photosynthesis can grab sunbeams and, and put it into some, in a physical structure that you can see, hold, weigh, trade, uh, that herbivores can eat and make meat and milk and all sorts of cool stuff out of. I mean, that is truly, uh, that is truly amazing. And and, and using the science of how this metabolic cycle operates is how we have come to use the technology of computer microchipped uh, electric fence energizers and, you know, being able to 
psychologically control a herd of herbivores instead of control them with fire and wolves and actually biomimic domestically the great migratory soil building patterns of, of herbiv or herbivorous herds uh, throughout the eons of time, we can actually now duplicate that even, even, even better, uh, uh, more ecologically perfectly matching the cyclical growth of the grass metabolism of the sunbeams to the need of the animal, we can actually manage that better than the kind of haphazard approach of wolves and big herds of bison and all that. Don't want to detract from that, but we can actually manage that better. That's using science to actually monitor the energy flow and the bricks and all that of, of the forage so that we, so that we perfectly, perfectly control the day that herbivore and the pruning needs of the forage are met on the exact day. That's pretty cool. What are the results of that? Well, the results of, of that kind of management are that we can greatly increase the productive capacity and the metabolic capacity of the biomass, in this case, grass, clover, you know, uh, and those. We can actually uh, increase that productive capacity. So, for example, in our neck of the woods in Virginia, in Augusta County, Virginia, uh, let's back up, a cow day. A cow day. You know, a carpenter uses inches, a wheat farmer uses bushels, um, you know, a water manager uses gallons, okay? So a cow day is a constant measure of what a cow will eat in a day. So the food that you eat today is one person day of food, all right? So our constant measure for productive capacity coming out of this, out of this biomass, this metabolize sunbeams, um, is a cow day. And in our county, the average cow days per acre on pasture is 80 cow days per acre. That's the average productive capacity on our farm. We have not planted a seed. We've not put on a bag of chemical fertilizer in 55 years. And our production is 400 cow days per acre. That's five times the county average. So that is what we can do when we actually use technology, not to override nature, but to come alongside as a co-laborer of nature, humbly, to simply uh, create the pattern a little more precision, a little less fuzziness in the pattern, and tweak it to a little bit of a greater uh, meticulous precision. That's really cool. I mean, another one, another one uh, is is um, is the uh, electrified poultry netting now that we have there's I mean this is this stuff's only been around for what 20 years and and the um, and the the poultry netting is a, is a polyethylene uh, you know it's just plastic okay with a stainless steel almost unseeable filament of thread run through it to conduct electric spark so you have you have an, an electric uh, fence um, energizer that's generating high voltage, low amperage, okay, so it doesn't hurt you, it just pains you. In other words, it doesn't hurt you physically, it, it, it's just not something you want to touch. Um, and, and because the computer microchips have been able to shorten the spark down so short, there's no resistance, there's no time to build up heat in this thread, which then doesn't allow it to melt the polyethylene, all right, webbing, and so here we have now today, um, literally in the last 20 years, we have now a material that is black bear, fox, coyote, skunk, and chicken proof that 150 feet of it only weighs 12 pounds and one person can take it up and put it down in 10 minutes. Now, if, if that isn't cool, what that means is that for the first time in human civilization, we can run large commercial scale flocks on pasture safer, more sanitary, more hygienic, and more ecologically enhancing than a backyard flock in a Nebraska homestead 200 years ago. That is cool.